Hey guys, and welcome to the Alabama Saltwater Fishing Report, the first podcast to bring you the local fishing report, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. We are uh, enjoying this pretty weather, aren't we today, Captain Patrick? Yes, sir, man. I am. I just feel blessed to look up and see blue sky every day. It I know has it, been. Man. We had such a gloomy January and February that just seeing blue sky every day is awesome. It is, man. It's beautiful out. As you guys can see, I am joined today with Captain Patrick Garmison with Ugly Fishing. You got a good good trip today in the past couple of days, haven't you, Captain Patrick? Man, it's been good. We've we've done everything from sheephead fishing out of the rigs to red fishing in the marsh around the Mississippi Sound and red fishing around Weeks Bay, Magnolia River, uh, Eastern Shore. I've kind of spread myself all over the bay, and and I mean I'm catching fish everywhere. So it's been it's been a fun week. Especially with, like I said, the sun shining and we're catching fish, you can't beat it. No, man, you definitely cannot beat that. That's great. Um, I know we were talking last week a lot about uh, the transition, you know, between really, I guess, between, (laughs) I guess we don't really, we kind of get a spring here, but you know what I mean? The transition from the colder temperatures to the warmer temperatures, you're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of change. A lot of the change that I'm seeing is we're, we're starting to see, I haven't really targeted speckled trout a lot, but just the redfish in general. There's been a lot of movement, seems like, from the rivers and creeks out into the open waters of the bay. But really, a lot of what seems to be happening is now that that water temperatures stabilized above 60 degrees and six, you know, it's anywhere from 60 to 65, depending on where you're at. Maybe even 66. If uh, the fish are the the fish are really aggressively feeding now, they're not as lethargic as we've been talking about all winter long. A red fish, when you set the hook on him, he's pulling drag and trying to break you off immediately. Yeah. It's not just this, you know, a fish that's kind of wallowing around and you get to kind of drag them in the boat. So yeah, the the fish have been uh, been getting a lot more aggressive. Been mostly targeting fish with uh, live shrimp and shrimp imitation baits. That's that's been the redfish game, but man, I'll tell you the the one sh- the sure true sign of spring is that it was that sheephead bite we got on. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had really nice calm conditions uh, this Monday. We hit a couple of rigs, and it seemed like the bite was okay. And then we we moved to another rig, and I always talk about this and with sheephead fishing this time of year is is I like to see some fish up top and see that i i mean i like to see not just one solo fish but i like to kind of ease around till i see a spot where there's like five or six fish on one pole mm-hmm. and if i see that i'm gonna give i'm gonna stop and i want to give that some time and we made we made a couple of moves and we would see one here and we'd see one there and we'd pick up and basically catching one here one there and then we move we made a move on the rig found where there was one of the big legs had probably six fish on it. I'm like, all right, guys, this has got to be the mother load right here. Mm-hmm. Game on. Was, I mean, it was game on. Every drop, you drop a, a, a dead shrimp, a live shrimp, and it got so crazy that right at the end, I was like, all right, I'm just going to screw it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something, and I put a slick lure. Uh, the, the I saw that. Jig head. I dropped that joker 10 feet deep. And all of a sudden the line went slack and I set the hook and I had me a three or four pound sheep head on a slick lure. I was like, all right. Yeah. I told the guys, I was like, I said, boys, y'all are witnessing what sheep head fishing is all about. And this was as good as it gets. And man, we, we had some real hammers. We had some fish up to about eight or nine pounds. The guys kept a few for uh make some ceviche and some and some fish tacos and whatnot and uh threw a bunch of fish back but man it was an absolute blast so i would i would anticipate that holds up for the next uh next couple weeks and if you know folks are out there looking for a sheephead bite that's you know especially once the sun's up and and you can look down into the rig and see where these fish are uh that's going to help you maximize your catches a lot Heck yeah, man. That sounds like a lot of fun. Good, man. Let's uh let's dive into this thing. 
This week's Alabama Saltwater Fishing Report is brought to you by CCA Alabama. They're having a Tag Alabama seminar this Saturday at the Boat Show in Orange Beach at the Wharf. This is going to start at 1.15 p.m. There'll be a short presentation at the seminar stage, and then they will do an orientation for anyone who wants to start tagging fish with them. Another great way to support conservation projects like the Claude Petit Flounder Hatchery and the University of South Alabama Cobia Tagging Project is through the purchase of a distinctive CCA Alabama Saltwater Fishing License Plate. Just head over to Alabama Department of Revenue's distinctive license plate page at revenue.alabama.gov to get yours. I want to say something about that real quick, Butch. I have two CCA plates, one on my old truck, one on my new truck, and I'm also tagging a lot of redfish. I'm actually out of redfish tags, so I need to get uh, I need to get with Blakely and see if he has any redfish tags for me. If not, mm-hmm. hopefully I'll see him Saturday. That's right. Um, it's a really cool experience. I get to, you know, especially with customers, sometimes I'll have people that are strictly catch and release and I'll have some that want to just keep a couple of fish. And it's a, it's a really neat way for me to be able to bring my customers in on the, on, you know, on educate them on why we're tagging them. And, you know, and we're, we're taking a look, we're taking more time per fish and really enjoying the whole situation a lot more. And man, they're they're really digging it. They really enjoy putting the tag in or helping me put the tag in and document everything, and then letting that fish go. Man, it's a it's a really rewarding experience for me and my customers. So. Absolutely, yeah. The guys that uh the guys that fish a lot, they need to they need to get some of these. You know, like a tagging kit and keep it on your boat because you're right. It is a cool thing to do. You know, I mean, it's great to tag and re- or just just release. Sorry, not tag. It's great to release a fish. You know, take a picture and then back in the water but this is more of a more of a trophy scenario in, in yeah. my opinion you know what i mean it I gives you so too. it gives you incentive and it's like man you know take a picture with that fish with a tag in it and then you really did something you know what i mean exactly all right, all right man well let, let's head on down to our first contributor captain patrick who's gonna do our first report for today bud well we're gonna go down to orange beach alabama and hear from um fellow daphne alumni patrick ivy captain patrick on the breathe easy how are we doing today captain patrick Good. How about you guys? Oh, man. We're both just happy to see some sunshine and blue skies. How about you? No doubt about it. This spring is definitely in the air. Yeah. You got the boat ready? You on the yard? You off the yard? We're in the yard, pulled out uh, Monday, and hope to be back in the water on Friday. Mm, shipyard word. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's fishing's picking up and, and you know people are starting to get offshore and we're sitting at the dock basically you know sitting in the boat yard ready to get back in the water oh man that's not that's not good but i know you always have your uh, fingers on the pulse over there what's the story tell me a fishing story fishing offshore this weekend was really really good several boats um offshore three specifically that i talked to and between those three boats they caught 10 blue marlin and had a couple more shots Ooh. wow so it was it was Really, really good offshore. A um, couple of nice tunas. Buddy of mine caught one around 170 pounds, and then there, another boat caught a couple that were both of theirs were over 100, and then one of the other boats said they caught all they wanted. It was it was really good, and and said they couldn't get away from them. Junk and trolling and live bait. That's hard to beat there. Yeah, were the marlins caught trolling or live baiting or both? I know you said the tunas. Some of both. Uh, buddy of mine, Jared Johnson from Destin. Uh, they were three for three this weekend, and they had a double header pulling plugs, and caught both of those, and then caught a single live bait. That is very promising. Yeah. I'm ready to get out there and do some of that as well. Absolutely, you and me both. What's your? Uh, you don't have to be specific or name names. What's your or brand names actually? What's your favorite plug to pull when you're looking for a big old fat mama marlin? Man, I. I as you know, we're big time live baiters, but if I'm pulling plugs, it's hard to beat old Islander and a Ballyhoo combo. Ain't no doubt um, about that. I'm a big Black Mark fan, and yeah. then we got a couple of you know custom lures that are you know not mass produced that work really, really well for us. A couple of Joe Yees, you know, just kind of stuff that you pick up over the years, and you know you throw it out there and it magically gets bit. You know, you know how that goes. Some of your oh, yeah. lures you can drag around out there for weeks on in and never get bit and then you can pull out one that you know gets bit all the time that wasn't in the spread for some reason throw it overboard and it gets bit you know kind of look through your lure tray and find the ones that look like they've been drugged behind your truck down the highway <laughs> how you find your how we tell which lures are the best for us that's well, right is there uh 
is there a particular color preference um anything that's that you know if it, if you just had the one to drag if uh you had a color you'd choose man yeah oh yeah islander wise <laughs> would be blue and white you know without a doubt blue and white islanders produced more fish than any other lure in the entire world probably won more money than any other lure in the entire world um that's true but there are lots of favorite colors black and purple i like you know, a big old, I, I like a big old blue and white soft head for a big plug yeah old, yep old snoop dog works real well which yes, is what sir. we all call a blue and white soft head yeah um which Butch knows we we got names everybody there's common names for lures around the blue marlin world and stuff like that we got, we got a lure called drew breeze we got snoop dog you know um mr t we got a mr t black and orange <laughs> yep, yep. Hall- we, we called well, black and orange was halloween to us um nice. But there's, you know, there's really good color combinations, but we're big on trying to, you know, match what's out there. If, if there's, you know, a lot of hardtails or blue runners around, we want something that looks like color. If we're, you know, trolling a rip that's got a lot of chicken dolphin on it, we want to pull, you know, green and blues or green, blues and yellows, something that mimics what bait is out there, just like when you're trout fishing or whatnot. Yep, okay. that's right. Uh, so you said they caught some nice tunas. Uh, that's some pretty big, uh, some pretty big tunas there. They caught those straight south of here. Or I know they were catching them over, you know, the west side for a while. But those are m- more to the south and east. Yeah, all the yeah, all the tunas sound like they're starting to push. You know, water's warming up and and they're starting to push back offshore. Um, a buddy Man, of mine great. caught two tunas off the same rig, and one of them had really pink you know, like almost like a clear pink color. And the other one was your normal bright red, dark red color. And that's all from diet. The one fish, the, the lighter color, they're eating those pogies up there inshore on the lumps and stuff. And they get real oily and fatty. Mm-hmm. And that's, that turns the meat that color. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have heard that. But that's great though, man. Maybe, uh, man, maybe this summer will be better than last summer for them tunas. That was rough last summer. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's hope so. They get a lot of pressure on them. It sounds like they had a really good late winter, early spring on them so far this year. A pile of 200 pounders caught. Well, it's been a, just a weird year altogether. So maybe this year will be a little different than the last couple of years on tuna. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Hopefully so. All right, buddy. We, That'd well, we be know, good. Yeah, it would be good. You know, we like to get that offshore tip from you each week. And this week's offshore tips brought to us by Killer Doc. They will be at the Orange Beach Boat Show this weekend. You guys go check them out at the wharf if you hadn't put your hands on one of these things yet. Oh, Captain Patrick Garmerson claimed some sheephead on them, what, last week? Yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, table, sir. It is. You have to get you one. You guys go check them out at the Orange those Beach Boat Show. Fine. Those tables are fine. Yeah, they are. And uh, if you guys can't make it to the boat show this weekend, just check them out at killerdoc.com to check out the greatest fish cleaning stations known to mankind. What you got for a, or a tip this week, Captain Patrick Ivey? This time of year, everything's starting to come together. Fish are starting to show up. You know, typically uh, most of your blue marlin, I feel like, are resident fish. Um, the tuna stay here year round, but all your bait kind of moves around. Hardtails are starting to show back up. Um, wads of Benita, all those fish are, are, are coming back in here. So offshore, um, sometimes this time of year, you can hit two or three rigs that look like a desert and get to a rig that is, is chock full of life. Um, this time of year, bounce around until you find a rig that has some bait and then camp out, and usually good things will happen. Yeah, I mean, predators are going to be where the bait fish are. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I see a lot of that trout fishing in the throughout the summer. I mean, really almost all year, but it's especially the case in the in the summer and the winter when I'm fishing deeper water. Man, trying to find those bait balls and stuff really helps put me on the fish for sure absolutely and, uh, those bait you're looking for them on your mostly your machine or you know site a lot of your machine um yeah i like to see a little bit of both you know one of the things we pay a lot of attention to if baits up around on top and everything like that your bait's got to be there period for fish to be there but you don't want to see a lot of happy bait you want to see nervous bait so if the bait's up there on top way out away from the rig chances are there's not much going on right there at that time. Now, that doesn't mean there's not a fish, you know, a half a mile or a mile away from the rig waiting on feeding time. But, you know, you definitely want to mark some on your bottom machine, too, that's down, you know, a couple hundred feet and, you know, staged up. That's That, to me, is what you're looking for. 
I like it, man. That's a great tip, man. We, we appreciate you being on the show as always, Captain Patrick, and uh, hope the boat gets off the yard soon. And, man, I, I wish you all luck. I know we'll talk to you again soon, but wish you all luck on this tournament season. Thank yeah, you. Man. Appreciate it. All right, man. That's an exciting offshore report. I like to hear about those tunas and those salt stick nose fish. Man, I don't, I don't know anything about catching any of them, but it, I always get excited when somebody starts talking about blue marlin. We'll have to get you out there, man. Yeah, I'd like one to day, see. I'd like to see you on a big old tuna or a marlin. Uh, maybe a marlin. I don't. I don't know. Just tuna fishing just seems like it's too much. Like trying to drag a dang Jack Cavalier by his tail. And a lot of times it is. Maybe ten times worse <laughs> than that. <laughs> All right, man. Let's head on down to the uh, Gulf beaches and see what the Bama Beach Bum is doing. Matthew Isbell, how we doing today, Matthew? Doing good, fellas, and, and I'm hanging out with my 16-month-old daughter, so if you hear some, some screaming and whining, uh, that's what's going on. <laughs> that's okay, man. Maybe she has a report, too. Yeah, maybe she – Yeah. or she's gonna, or she's calling you out on your lies, right? That could be. That's well. right. <laughs> yeah, if you hear if you hear a squeal, I might be going, going the wrong direction and not telling the truth. There you that's go. All right. well, what's been going on? Tell us a fish story. Yeah, it's uh well the the pattern this past week and and, I, and and for coming up this weekend I think this is going to hold fishing in the morning and the AM has been just dead. I mean, unbelievably dead in the surf. If you've been going out in the mornings, which most people do, you know, that's what most people want to do, they get out there early in the morning. It's really just has not been worth your time. Uh I've even been like I I've been running two trips a day. But uh, this past week, my morning trips, I've been, I've been saying, guys, that ain't even worth going. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, so, it's been that bad. Uh, we, we have, I mean, we'll stay at Rods and we'll get a bite, no matter what you do. And and I'm, and you know, I'm out there every day. I'm fishing all the way from Orange Beach to Fort Morgan. I've used every bait from ghost shrimp, fish bites, sand fleas, fresh dead shrimp. I've used it all. So That's interesting. Uh, it doesn't matter. What you do? <laughs> Put them water to death. Are y'all dealing with some really low water? I don't. I don't think the 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 theory that I have on it, um, you know, it, it, is I, I think it's, it is tide related, and I think part of it too is um, we we had that full moon uh, kind of come, you know, that that cycle, and it really I think that kind of threw off that early morning bite. But I think that was part of it. And of course, we're away from that now. And it, but it's still kind of that way, and I think it has to do with with the tides. I think because the water temperatures, like because for slur fishing, you know, water temperature is important for everything, but it's so important for these confidence, uh, that water temperature being, you know, that like sixty eight kind of degree mark and you know low seventies, and we're still not there yet. And I think what we're needing is that really warm Gulf water. And it, and even though I like fishing in the incoming tide, and the incoming tides have been in the morning. I think you really got to be close to that higher tide, which has been in the afternoons here lately. And I think you got to be closer to that, whether that's leading up to it on the backside of it, which is going to put you in the afternoon, evening time when the bite's better. And that's been the case. So that's my theory has been just hugging as close as you can to the high tide, because that's going to be when yeah. that warmer Gulf water is the most present, you know, in the surf. And that's when we're catching fish. So well, that makes been, sense. But I could be wrong. That's a theory. <laughs> right. That's right. I'm, I'm guessing. <laughs> We're always guessing. Um, that's right. I know. It's <laughs> educated. It's crazy. Guessing. Educated. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Well, what you been yeah. catching? Yeah, we're catching mainly whiting and, and a lot of pompano, a lot of short pompano, but we're catching them. Uh, we it's are early. getting some legals mi- mixed in there. It is early. It, it still is early. I mean, and, and, and Oh, you're okay. lying. Oh, Are you no, really catching pop? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So she's calling me out. That's what that is. That's my daughter. Yeah, she's, she's not happy back there and strapped into that car seat. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's still early, I would say, especially for running the beaches. I mean, you can still find pop it around structure. Uh, that's kind of been the pattern throughout the winter. But if you're fishing the beaches, it's going to be a tougher go at it. But we are catching them. Whiting is still your best opportunity, and that's what we're catching a lot of in the evenings. I will say it's been like uh, t- I was talking to my group today because we, we had a really good day with whiting. But locating them can be tricky uh, because over the last three days, they've been in three completely different places in relation to the bar. <laughs> so, um, and that that's that can be frustrating when you expect them to be in one place and they're not and you're trying to locate them within that area and, and they end up being somewhere else for instance uh three days ago 
uh, or two days ago, whatever, however, however you say that, um, two days ago, they were on the front side of the bar within like 20 yards of the beach, so pretty close in. And then uh, yesterday, they were on the back side of the bar, probably anywhere from 40 to 50 yards. And I'm fishing Fort Morgan uh, area, which the bar is closer, so you can, you know, fish either side of it. That's not, you know, it's completely different fishing in different parts of the Alabama coast, but it probably holds true. You probably are going to have to move your baits around to find the fish, I would think, in those areas as well. But we'd, we were fishing on the back side of the bar yesterday, catching whiting, but they couldn't, couldn't buy a bite on the front side of the bar. And then today we got out there. It took me 45 minutes, no lie, because I was putting baits on the front, the back, and moving them within just different distances on either side of it. And we were not getting a bite. 45 minutes. Seriously, did not get a bite. Dang. And I was like, well, maybe they're on the bar. <laughs> so I put a bait on the bar and immediately got a bite. And yeah. it was on like crazy for the next two hours. Like we were literally like keeping keep, keep the bait in the water. It was whiting after whiting after whiting, but they were hugging tight on that sandbar. Yeah. Really interesting to see over the course of the three days, seeing how different it was and where those fish were. And just so, you know, don't get stubborn with your whiting. I mean, they'll hang in one area, you know, that's the fish that you can target in the surf and really crush them, you know, lay into them. Whereas, other species, you know, you're kind of waiting for them to be cruising by like your pompano and stuff, but you got to find them. You know, they can be tough. I've seen that a lot with, uh, with redfish pattern, especially like around, uh, piers and docks and stuff like that, where one day you may be able to hit them and they're at the very end of the docks or even out off of the docks. And then sometimes they're midways and sometimes they're all the way up on the shore. So that's a really cool that you that you've picked up on that as well because it's you know the fish are still in those same general areas but you you definitely have to cover that whole that whole area to make sure that they're you know to find out where they are so anyway that's really cool that you picked that up yeah they, they'll definitely keep you honest day to oh day. man you ain't lying <laughs> just like your daughter oh yeah i know yeah i felt one coming I, I thought she was about to call you out. I'm not seeing any reds personally. I mean, there I've seen some that have been caught on, on certain days. And we, like, historically in surf fishing, the days that we do better on redfish are, are your really strong current, really rough surf days, and the water's usually a little bit dirtier. Uh, the clear water, calm days. Uh, sometimes you'll see the redfish in those days, but you can't get them to bite in the surf. It's a little harder. So haven't had a lot of those days here lately. So I mean, haven't seen a lot of redfish. But um, for your bigger fish, we are still catching the big black drum. And you know, you'll you'll pretty much every trip. We, we, <laughs> we're, here we go. I'm, I'm about to I'm about to tell you a fib here. But every day we're usually getting one or two bites from those big black drum. Whether or not we actually land them, that's another story. It just depends on uh, which which rod they take. If they take the one that I'm fishing for lighting. Sometimes we we end up losing those guys, but. Uh, if you get them on the right right setup, we can get them to the beach. You ever, cool. uh, I guess you got some those whiting on uh, fish bites or dead shrimp, or what's been the ticket whenever you do find those those big schools of whiting? It's been on both. Uh, we've got and and I use both because you know sometimes it, it switches up day to day as far as what's producing more. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, I would say the majority of the time, you're going to get quicker bites if you are able to locate them with fresh dead shrimp, and uh, you know try to avoid the frozen stuff, but um that or sand fleas there you know we haven't started seeing really the colonies presenting themselves on the beaches yet it's got to warm up just a little bit more before you can really see them but they are there and they're mostly small right now the ones that i've been able to rake up and those real small sand fleas like all the whiting that i clean that that's what's in their bellies and so you know if you can rake up some sand fleas if you've got some time or if you want to pay the money and not buy the bait uh, that's a really, really good bait uh, for those smaller whiting but it makes sure you're using a real small hook you know you don't want to use anything too big because they're teeny tiny but uh you'll pick up those whiting for sure matthew i've got i've got two bait questions there you you mentioned the dead shrimp it seems like whenever i always fish for whiting i always want to peel the shrimp and and uh and get it on the hook are you peeling your shrimp when you do that and about what size piece of shrimp are you going to put on your hook um, I do peel my shrimp and, and honestly, I don't know if it makes a difference, but I just feel better about it. You know, <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, I don't know why, but I do. And, uh, I use probably about anywhere from a half inch to an inch size piece. And I'm using for my whiting rigs, I use size six, uh, circle hooks. And it's the owner Mutu lights, you know, which of course every brand 
you know, has different size hooks, but size six is what I'm using in owner hooks. And so just a real tiny piece, just really enough to cover that hook. And, uh, and, and that's it. And I peel it. So, you know, if you've got a piece of shrimp, you know, an average, you know, shrimp, you can usually cut it into three pieces and, uh, you know, that each piece is plenty big enough to, to pick up those whiting. And, and that was even that tiny little piece of shrimp. That's what we hooked up on a big black drum today that broke us off. Uh, I mean, that, uh-huh. those, those fish will eat those tiny little pieces. We can oh, yeah. all the time. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Unbelievable. Elephants eat what a, peanuts. Yeah. Elephants uh, yeah. eat peanuts. What, uh, on the fish bites, if you're going to use that, what, how big of a piece are you going to use? Uh, have you, do you, use multiple little pieces tell me a little bit about that yeah i cut uh maybe like a half inch square you know just a, just a tiny little square and put it on the hook and i usually on my pompano rigs I'm, I'm using size two hooks so i use a little bit larger size hook uh than the size six you know that we use on our whiting hooks and i just want just enough to really kind of go with that hook size you know just uh, that's kind of what we're using there so uh not not a real big piece and uh as far as flavors go um uh, i've been experimenting with more which is kind of fun to experiment because some days you know you'll get bites on one flavor whether it be shrimp or sand flea or crab or clam or whatever and some days you, you know one will produce more than the other so i've been doing that more but the one that se- seems to win most of the time for your pompano and your whiting is the sand flea flavor I mean, if you are only ever going to buy one more flavor of fish bites, that's the one I would say go with for our area. You know, that seems sure. to be the most productive for our area. That's good to know. I like it, man. That's a good report. <laughs> We're going to get that uh, onshore tip from me this week. And this week's onshore tip is brought to us by Trotter Marine. Trotter Marine has their Triton and Crestliner all aluminum boats at cost plus rigging. So what I'm saying is they will sell you a Triton or Crestliner boat at their cost plus the cost to set it up with an engine and rigging. And they do more than just boats. They also have a complete line of truck accessories to choose from. You guys get on over to Charter Marine on Highway 43 in Satsuma, or you can call Ray or Burns at 251-679-5959, or you can check them out at chartermarinellc.net. What are you thinking for a tip this week, Matthew? Yeah, something interesting that uh, a buddy of mine that's been fishing with me now a couple of times, his name's Todd Sims. He he also does a lot of diving, and uh, he was doing some spear fishing for some sheep's head. And he also was chasing down this school of pompano, and he was reporting back to me that this school was all stacked on top of each other, and the smaller pompano were on the bottom, and the larger pompano were on the top of the school. Hmm. Well, we've been catching a lot of short pompano lately this year, and if you've been pompano fishing, you're well aware of that. But what I did, because what I had been doing is using a lot of single drop rigs, and which, of course, is going to be closer to the bottom, I uh, started tying more double drop rigs and making sure that the, my top drop was a little bit higher, and I made sure I put a float on it. And the bigger, you know, pompano that have been keeper size that we have caught have been on that top float. We haven't caught a lot, <laughs> but the ones right. that we have caught have been there. So I don't know if it's an exact science, but it seems to be working out uh, so far. Getting, you know, if we do get a school pompano coming by and we do happen to catch a legal one, it is high, It does seem to be higher off of the, the bottom and, and uh, a more suspended bait. I like and, it. That's, uh, it's early, so that's a good sign. But, I mean, yeah, if you're going to optimize your chances while you're in the water, it's a, great, it's a great time to try it now when those smaller ones are there more. Absolutely, yeah. Anything to give you a shot at getting one in the cooler. That's right. Anything, yeah, that's, yeah. A great, that's a Anything great tip, Matthew. Making, yeah, I really like that tip, Matthew. Anything to... Uh, add a little more fish to the fryer i'm always down for you know that (laughs) well that's good man starting to starting to heat up all around if folks want to get up with you and learn a little more about surf fishing and and take you on a or go on a guided trip with you what's the best way to look you up they can check out my website it's uh staybummy.com that's s-t-a-y-b-u-m-m-y awesome matthew we always appreciate you contributing man keep whacking them thanks a lot matthew see you bud all right, Butch. That was a uh, that was a pretty solid report from Matthew Isbell. Like a tip, bomb. It's time to go down and check out our our uh, buddy Bobby Abrascado. Where are you hanging out today, Bobby? Parts of Southwest Alabama. How about that? I like it. Give us a rundown of um, of kind of what's happened this week and and uh, any trends you might be seeing for the weekend and an upcoming week. You fished last week, and everybody, all of us guys, us outdoor guys are always up early or 
or at least into the evening. And, you know, you saw that big moon last week, you know, and it's, mm-hmm. a, it's kind of a, that's kind of a good news, bad news thing, that big full moon. They, they, they're kind of starting into a spawning period right now. Um, really they get more into it as it warms up just a little bit more in a month or so but that activity always still even when they're not in a spawn like even during the late fall and winter when they're not truly spawning they still act like they spawn around that moon the down that's the good news they gather up and they bite good the bad news is about after about three days of he and she and they kind of have to every once in a while kind of sit back and go you kind of almost sit see them laying back smoking a cigarette going like oh i need a little break you know so, <laughs> you know what i'm saying so we just got done with that period and then now we're cycling into this really nice uh, period too, from a tide standpoint, where you got that, you know, when, when you start your trip in the morning right now, so I'm leaving at 6:30, uh, and uh, right now, and you know, at 6:30 we've got moving water because uh, the tide's starting to come in, like you know, around midnight, one, two in the morning. So we're, you know, you, you're starting your trip with moving water, and us, and and we're behind that that kind of you know that that resting period. Now we've kind of gotten out of that bad five day behind the moon period. Then on top of all of that, you know, we're going to warm up a little bit this weekend. The winds are going to clock around more to the east and south. That's going to bring the water levels up. And I think that's really going to come together for a really good weekend of fishing. Uh, I, I love that that easterly wind direction. Uh, you know, it cleans the water up, particularly west of the Dolphin Island Bridge. And on top of that, if you keep up with Barry Steam Plant, which is kind of the, the benchmark for, for um, water clarity, it's it's – you know, it'll be under five feet or at least at five feet by the weekend. It's under six feet right now. So it's a really all coming together, man, really for, you know, it was kind of a rough winter, but man, it's really starting to come together for some good stuff uh, right at the right time too. I can't agree anymore. I've been anywhere from the Causeway down to, down to the uh, Mississippi Sound and over to, to uh, Weeks Bay and, and man, the water's really improving. I mean, the only places I'm really seeing any bad water is if is if it's just wind blown and churned off. It's it's really right. coming together nice. Right, and that's going to just keep getting better. If you even if you look at the rivers north, you know, way up, that's the ones that obviously feed into the delta. Um, you know, all of those have really bottomed out, and they're not even showing any kind of spike coming up. So we we got you know it's going it's getting good, man. It's getting like it's supposed to be for the spring. That's awesome. You've been chasing trout or redfish or what you've been doing? But you know me, buddy. I'm gonna be chasing those trout. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? I'm hard headed, man. I'm 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 chasing after them in the dead of summer when they just will not bite. But yeah, you know, and it's been fun. I, I love this time of year because uh, I love it all, but I, I just like this time of year because it's you know the the word you just use chasing them is kind of that that describes what I do this time of year. You really, you know, you can't go you know, you can't just go and throw the anchor out on a spot and start catching trout. You have to, like you said, chase them. So I'm looking for things like slicks and, and where they were yesterday, they may not be today. you got to really kind of, you know, again, chase them. you got to look for them. And I enjoy that kind of fishing. Um, the, the reward to it is, is when you, you know, it's a function of finding them because when you do find them, it's, it's most of the time it's an absolute whack fest, you know, because the fish aren't getting beat up because they're staying on the move. Um, when they get into the spawning mode, which they were, you know, through the end of la- I mean, the uh, middle of last week, you know, they really bite good, you know, so it's, it's really just a lot of fun to do that kind of fishing. And, and sometimes it actually makes you look like you know what you're doing if you just pull up to a, you know, a, a, an open flat with no uh, structure on it or no markers or anything and start catching fish and the charter goes, I didn't know there were fish here. I saw a right. little shiny spot on the water right there, you yeah. know. But uh, anyway, it's, it's so I love that kind of fishing. It's it's run and gun fishing. It's uh, it's usually a lot of action. Um, you can get by if you got live bait. It's great, but you can get by real well on artificial bait too, which I really love. So it's just a fun time of year. So yeah. Anyway, I haven't said all of that. Yes, I've been I've been trout fishing. You seeing a popping cork? Yeah, it's a popping cork deal. Uh, you know, the good thing about the popping cork is it stimulates the bite, but it also lets you be real mobile, you know, and cover water. So yeah, it's a popping cork for me. I mostly fish even when I, even when I have live bait. I'm, I myself mostly stay with the artificial because I'm trying more or less just to cover water. I want to make sure I find the fish for for the group that I got with me. And um, so I'm using like small, sh- you know, shrimp imitations and so forth uh, under a popping cork. Um, and, and just looking for the cork to go down. A lot of times I don't even have to catch a fish when I hit the power poles. And again, that's where the school, you know, that, that usually find, that's how you find the school. Then I, I, I switch them back and forth between live and artificial, depending on how the bite is. I know, And, and it's popping cork time of year. You know what I'm leaving right now? I'm having, 
you know, anywhere from 12 to 14 rods on the boat. And, and, you know, out of all of those, you know, if I have 14 rods, 12 of them are going to have popping corks on them, you know? Yes, so, sir. For uh, sure. Uh, I know Captain Patrick Garmison did a, uh, he was interviewed for an article in Great Days Outdoors and they were talking about the artificial shrimp lures. And when do you go scented or non-scented or just talk a little bit about that if you don't mind? Cause I, I don't, oh, I don't no, that's do any good. kind of scented stuff on my boat just because I'm a lazy fisherman. But, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys think about that? I don't use a lot of scent when I'm trout fishing. Uh, you know, they're a visual, you know, it's a visual strike. It's visual, uh, it, you know, the fish really are more, trout are more, uh, it's more of a visual stimulation with them. They're more of sight feeding and ambu- ambush feeding fish. And um, so, I, you know, very rarely put, scent on a shrimp imitation when i'm targeting trout you know the only time i'll do it i carry like uh procure is one of my favorites or i like those fish sticks that come in like a uh come in like a lip balm stick you know you can kind of roll it out by the way i'll tell you i'm gonna tell you one quick thing if you use that fish stick and I speak from experience on this, don't lay it on the dash next to your sunscreen <laughs> lip balm and be in a hurry because there's a difference in taste when you put those two on your mouth. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm sure uh, I'll give you that tip too. if you decide, That's if you a decide great to use tip. fish sticks, don't lay them next to your lip balm. But uh, anyway, uh, so I like that. And I, and I might do it if I'm getting some short strikes from the trout. I might put a little bit of scent on there just to help out with that. Uh, but on the flip side of that, if I'm targeting redfish, uh, I can take the same lure and I'll put that scent on them. And, and it's amazing by not having scent on it versus put scent on it with redfish, how well your bite, you know, your action goes up. Uh, and the other thing is if I'm targeting redfish, I use a bait that's made of scent, which is gulp. We're all familiar with that. Mm-hmm. And I've won, I'm probably a quarter million dollars fishing with gulp. So I, I, I mean, they're a sponsor of mine, but I'm telling you there there's, if you're going to go red fishing and you're using that type of, of bait, whether it be under a popping cork or on a jig uh, with a shrimp invitation, you're never going to find anything that's going to work better than a gulp for for, uh, for redfish because it's a visual stimulation. The shapes are real good. The the lure, the gulp itself, is actually made out of the scent, and it literally dissolves in the water. That's why if you leave it on a hook overnight, you come back and it's a piece of leather on your hook because all of that all that scent's basically evaporated. It does it in the air and in the water, you know, so that's how well it disperses the scent. So, uh, so anyway, you know, long answer to your question, but the gist of it is if I'm trout fishing, I don't worry about scent. If I'm red fishing, I'm always using scent. I couldn't agree anymore, Bobby. I'm always going with the voodoo with nothing or a, or a DOA or something like that with really no scent on it for trout. And then when I get into redfish mode, I definitely try to add a little bit of flavor to it. Richard likes those and he's kind of got me turned. I don't, he puts those fish bites on and those things work good too. And we like those fish bites. I usually don't use those unless I'm tournament fishing. Cause I not, to me, they kind of affect the action of the lure, you know, but, but anything like that is definitely going to help, you, I, you know, you know, with red fishing. I couldn't agree anymore. Richard and I fished a few weeks ago and he was, he was all about adding the fish bites to this and that, and I and I added it to my voodoo, and it and it uh, it seemed to increase the bite pretty quickly. So now when I'm red fishing uh, and I'm throwing a voodoo, I'm adding a little tip of a uh, little little bit of fish bite to it, and it seems to be yeah. And you gotta out. be you gotta be a little careful with it because, like you just said, the, the operative word there is little. You don't yeah, want to put a big old chunk of that stuff on there. You just need a little bitty bit of it because you you really don't want to affect the action of the lure too much. You put a big old wad of that stuff on there, and it just changes the way the lure looks, don't you think? I couldn't agree oh, anymore. Sure. I mean, I'm using I'm using something that's that I'm probably about a quarter by quarter inch at the biggest. Yep. About the size of a pencil uh, eraser. That's about as big a piece as I want on there. You know. That, yep, that's exactly what I've been doing. So this is a little off topic, and Patrick. I told you that I wasn't going to tell anybody. But, uh, <laughs> Uh-oh, watch out. Uh-oh. Did you tell Captain Bobby that I spanked your butt throwing the slick lure a couple, three weeks ago? Uh-oh. No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, I, try, I try not to let people know that novice anglers like yourself. <laughs> not, my hey, no doubt. That was beginner's luck all around. But we but, had I will, uh, but I will take credit on being the guide on that. That is show. right. I, so, mean, uh, I, I do get I, I get paid a lot more for being a guide than I do being a fisherman. So and no doubt about that's it. Exactly. Hey, you know what the other thing too? What the other thing too? You tell them, Pat, uh, Patrick. I, this is what I always say. I said, well, let me let me ask you this. 
it, it, you're, so you're taking credit for catching all the fish. If we'd have gone out and didn't catch any fish, would it also have been your fault? Would you oh, have been yeah. the cause of it? Yeah, you exactly know that's it. So, yeah. so we 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 don't get any of the credit, but we get all the blame. Basically, is what happens. You know. Oh, he knows I'm messing. I got thick skin. Oh yeah. Hey, that's the fun part of it, man. I tell the charters all the time. I said, dude, I, the best day I ever have on a charter is when I never catch a fish. I want to be down there taking them off and uh, oh, yeah. throwing them back and baiting you back up. My best days were the only time when I pick up, the only time I pick up a rod is to help you take a fish off. Uh, man, I like it. I will never claim to be a professional fisherman. That was all Patrick's <laughs> guidance. I'm just messing with him. There you go. All right, Captain Bobby, you are. We've got the Hey Cap question for you again this week. Oh, boy. Yeah, this week, Richie Ellison is going to get the Fairhope Rattle. Make sure you email us at alabama at bestfishingreport.com to redeem that. Richie Ellison says, hey, Cap, every year it seems like I spend too much time chasing turkeys and miss the big trout window. What is the ideal window for big trout, and when do our trout spawn? That's a great question. First of all, um, I don't think you miss it by doing turkey hunting. I think you miss some of it, but you're not totally missing it. You know, Patrick catches fish in the dead of winter which is way out of the spawning period he catches giant ones i'm not going to say where but i'll just say parks north um you know in the dead of winter and um and you know and, and some of the biggest trout i've ever caught have been in the in the late spring and early summer and if i had to say it you know the, the turkey hunting season which is you know typically march and, and part of april you know, you're at the very early part of that spawn you know i i think i'm leaning more towards more like late april may uh june but they'll start spawning in march and spawn all the way through late september into october as long as the wa- water temperatures are over 62 they're in spawning mode what makes the, the the fish bigger in the early part of the spawn is they continue to spawn the row sacks actually get smaller you know so when you're catching that you'll still be catching the spawning fish in september but if you look at the row sacks you know that same fish in may for example or april it's gonna be the size of a cigar where you catch one, that same fish in September, it'll be the size of a pencil, you know? And so that's mm-hmm. where that weight's added. You're catching mm-hmm. the same fish, you know, but the weight goes up because that row is so dense. So, so the answer to your question is you're really not missing it. And especially if you're just turkey hunting, man, I'd, I'd set down your, your turkey gear and, and, and grab you a top water, a slick lure and, and, and get after it in, in, in late April, early May. And don't quit until that's Patrick, right. what, till December, until turkey hunting season comes around again or whatever. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. trout trout fish from uh, from May to, to January, and you'll be good. Richie Ellison cannot use turkey hunting as an excuse to make <laughs> big trout anymore. <laughs> hey, Butch, you said that, not me, man. That's right. You know, I'm, sure I'm trying to make the poor guy feel better, you know? Yeah, definitely can uh, echo what, what Bobby's saying about that spawn. It's starting in late April, going all the way into September. But you know, Bobby, something that I have noticed in my experience is we we actually have a really big spawn in August, and I've seen some of the uh, some of the catch or the, some of the uh, stock assessment data from the marine resources that shows that May and August are actually two of the biggest spawns that we'll see in uh, in speckled trout. I don't know what really stimulates that, but um, I have caught twenty three inch six and a half pound trout in the month of august and it was all because of the row so that's exactly right and that's where the weight like you said like you just said that's a that 23 inch fish and you know you catch that during the during january or something it's probably going to be a three and a half pounder you know what i'm saying or four Four pounder at the most but yeah yeah. and uh yeah i know what you're saying and actually i caught one of the biggest trout i've caught a handful of what i consider real big trout in my life and one of them was this past year at the it was a uh, weekend i mean the weekend after labor day you know what i'm saying it was one of the biggest trout i've ever caught so you know again to, to the point is you're not i don't think you're missing it just because you're turkey hunting that's a great uh hey cap question he did mention in the end of his question he said he fishes eastern shore weeks bay and fort morgan marsh that's the same, right? That's all the same spawn pattern and all that. Or am I wrong? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Everything's everything in our system's the same. Really, everything on the northern Gulf Coast is the same. Right. You know, so yeah, you're anything in the Mobile Bay system is gonna you're gonna be right there with with all of that. You know exactly what we were just talking about. So yeah, so. you you know, it doesn't matter. I thought so. I just wanted to wanted to leave it up to yeah, yeah. You, you experts to say whether that was re- related or not because I left that out of the question. 
Well, well, you got the expert in the studio. I'm just out here on the phone for you. But, yeah, I know what you're saying. As always, we appreciate yeah. you uh, contributing. And thanks, Richie Ellison. Make sure you email us at alabama at bestfishingreport.com to get your hate cap questions in. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. All right, Captain Bobby. Keep whacking them. Thanks a lot, Bobby. All right, guys. Y'all have a good weekend. Man, great show, Butch. Anybody that's listening has got to be getting fired up about fishing right now. I know I, know I'm, I am. I'm, I'm, Dude, every like every time I've been on the water, the water's getting a little bit cleaner, the bite's getting a little more aggressive. I am super pumped about the, the coming weeks and, and months ahead. So um no, I'm with you, man. And uh, you know, as we always like to do, we like to between the co hosts, we like to say what did you learn? And this week's what did you learn is brought to us by Geico. Everybody knows Geico has great auto rates, but did you know they also have great rates on boats, ATVs, motorcycles, and personal watercraft? Give Ron Davis a call at 251-445-0053. Did you know Geico does even more than insure your valuable items? They also offer on-the-water services like towing, battery jumps, gas delivery, and you can save by bundling all these services with your insurance. Call Ron Davis, Geico Insurance, Geico agent, or visit him online at geico.com forward slash mobile dash AL. A lot of good information this week, man. What did you learn? Well, I heard something very like consistent amongst all of our contributors and it was mm-hmm. about not staying in any one place too long. Yeah. Patrick and, Ivey said, find the bait, sit on it because it's going to be a little spread out. You know, this time of year, it's not going to be every single rig you hit. It's not going to be jam packed with bait. So use your equipment, find those rigs, you know, offshore with, with the good read of bait and look for some on top as well. You're right. And mm-hmm. then his bell said what? He was talking about, about trying the, uh, you know, about being past the bar on the bar, uh, in front of the bar, you know, and then keying in on where those fish are. And yep. I mean, like he said, if, if he had gone past the bar in front of the bar for an hour, he would have went home with nothing. Yep. But instead, he put a he put a line on the bar and turned into a thirty fish day or something. So started I mean, whacking them, yeah. And then yeah. Captain Bobby said the same same thing. Bobby's talking about running and gunning, and I can't say. I mean, I, I'm seeing the yeah, same he thing. The same thing at the beginning I'm of the seeing, show. Well, the sheephead, we were picking up a one here, a one there, rode around till we actually saw the fish a bunch of fish, and boom, it was whack fest. I mean, just as as good as it gets. Uh, the redfish bite has been the same way. I mean, we're when we're making moves, it's like two minutes at a at an area that should have fish, and if you haven't had a bite within two minutes, then keep moving because right. I have. I mean, I, I've I've sat at some areas now for ten fifteen minutes trying to wait on something to happen, and yeah. uh, basically I'm just wasting time because That's right. yeah, you that, that bite thirteen minutes, huh? Yeah, exactly. Because the, uh, the, the bites coming within the first, a lot of times the first cast, if not the second cast. And then that one, you know, if you catch a fish on that first cast, I mean that it may turn into six or eight or 10 fish in one spot. So oh yeah, don't, huh? don't sit there and try to wait on a bite is what I'm trying to say. I like it. That seems to, uh, seems to be the theme of the show this week as well, man. That's great. <clears throat> I enjoyed this show, man. It's a good, I think it's going to be a great show. A lot of good information. And uh, as always, you guys subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you'd like to email us or like, if you'd like to email you the podcast, just head on over to greatdaysoutdoors.com forward slash ASFR. And we'll send you the new show each week. You guys get those hate cap questions in. They've been a little, a little slim lately on the hate cap. You guys email us at Alabama at bestfishingreport.com and we'll ask the uh, professionals any questions that you may have. Now I got one last thing to add, Butch. I've had the pleasure of taking several podcast listeners fishing the last couple weeks. Sweet. And guys, I really we really appreciate all the support and and everybody that's uh that's listening to the show. And it I mean it means a lot that that people are listening to the show and then also hiring me as their guide. It's very humbling, for to, sure, to, uh, to say the least. I know we were talking about it a minute ago. That was a great. Uh, we've got your sixth tournament this weekend. I enjoyed the heck out of it. We brought our our lab pepper up there, and I was my wife was there as well, and I really enjoyed everybody coming up to me and saying they enjoyed the show. And 
it was it was not it was awesome man that's what that's what we do it for i've said it from the very beginning this is the angler show this is the listener show we want to do what you guys like and uh it was it was cool yes it was tournament was awesome so it was man we had a great time all right guys another great alabama saltwater fishing report you guys keep whacking them stay tuned we'll be back next week see you guys this week's alabama saltwater fishing report has been brought to you by trotter marine Call Ray or Burns at 251-679-5959 or check them out at TrotterMarineLLC.com. Also brought to you by Geico. Call Ron Davis, Geico agent at 251-445-0053 or visit him online at geico.com slash mobile dash AL. Also brought to you by Coastal Conservation Association of Alabama. Check them out at ccaalabama.org. Also, Ugly Fishing Charters with Captain Patrick Garmison. You can check us out at uh, uglyfishing.com or call us at 251-747-1554. And also A-Team Fishing Adventures. Check them out online at www.ateamfishing.com or contact them at 251-661-7696. And also Killer Doc. Are you suffering from dock dysfunction? Check out a full line of dock enhancement at killerdock.com. That's killerdock.com.